One of the number one reasons why women struggle with dating and relationships today is that they choose men who are not ready for anything real. Ladies, there are lots of great relationship-ready men out here. However, you need to learn how to choose them. I wrote this book to teach you how to do just that. Get your copy of Choose Well, A Simple Formula to Determine the Best Man for You on Amazon today. I got this brief message that someone needs to hear. Someone needs to hear this message. And I actually uh, was having a conversation with a group of friends last night, and I've now had a chance to process it. So it's something I needed to hear. <laughs> and I believe it's something you need to hear as well. So ladies, um, when we're talking about our type, right, we have a type of man that we find ourselves attracted to. We have a type of man that we believe that we want when we're thinking about our ideal man. We have a type and oftentimes when we think about that type, we're thinking about the way he looks. We're thinking about the outward qualities that he has. So we're thinking about his hair, his teeth. We're thinking about his height. We're thinking about, you know, his eyes or his, his physique. Um, so we have all these outward things that we're thinking about when we're thinking about our type, whether he has a beard or not and all of that good stuff, right? Then we go on to describe characteristics. We go on to describe a man with certain characteristics. So um, I want him to be intellectual. I want him to be smart. And I want him to be good with money and finances. Um, we may even say, I want him to have money. Um, I want him to have a job that, you know, makes a good considerable income or, um I want him to be kind or I want him to, you know, we think about these characteristics. Some women even say, I want him to be extroverted. I want him to be outgoing, right? But here's what we don't give enough attention to. We don't give enough attention to how we want to be treated by that man. Mm. That's the part we leave out. And so I have a homework assignment for you because I believe, and I'm actually doing this assignment myself, I believe that we can shift our energy. We can shift our manifesting energy, bringing, calling in the one, bringing in our man, if that's what our heart desires. Because remember, I may want you to decenter men from your world. I may want you to, to create a big, beautiful life and and all the things you want in it, that does not mean you still do not desire love. That does not mean you still do not desire marriage or partnership, right? I think those two things can live in, in a same space. And it's a balance between those two things. That's what I'm often talking to women about. We have to balance those two things. No, your man is not your four course meal. Your man is dessert. Your life is your four course meal. OK, so if I were to put a percentage on it, I would say, you know, my man is 25 percent of my life and he may go up five or 10 percent if we get married. But my life is still my life. Like that's the bulk of what I'm here to do, what I'm here, what I'm sent here to do as a woman. It's my life. It's my life. And that could be being a mother. That could be being a wife. That could be being a business owner, being someone who, who makes a difference in this world. That could be a whole lot of things. But to say that, you know, my world revolves around the man in my life, even if that man's my husband, like that's just not smart. And I don't believe, you know, God designed any of us to revolve around any other of us. You know, I think God has a plan for each and every one of us and what we're sent here to do in our life. And we need to figure out what that is. But the idea that it is to center around our husband or wife and that's it. Like, no, there's there's another big thing you're sent here to do. And you have to figure out what that is. So back to the homework assignment, because I'm going off on a tangent. Um, 
I want you to sit down and I started doing this. So today is the full moon. I actually started doing this and I love journaling on the full moon because I am actually closing some chapters today. Today is the day that I close chapters. I will put an end with love, with care, with concern. I will put an end to some things. I will let some things go. I will let some relationships go today. I will let some situations and circumstances go. I will let some hurts go. I will let some things go today on the full moon, which signifies endings. Things are ending. A new chapter is beginning. And I am ready. I'm ready to do that. I've been on the fence for a very long time about certain people, certain situations, and circumstances in my life. And in the past seven days, I've woken up to the fact that, okay, it's time. It's time to let this go. Prior to this, I told myself to let it go. I told myself to walk away, but I have not energetically walked away. I have not energetically let it go. And I'm now, like, finally ready to do just that. So I welcome in this new energy that this moon is bringing. I welcome in the fun and the frolic and all the good energy. There's a lot of lucky energy coming this week and this weekend that I want you to take advantage of. But in this assignment, because this is what I will be doing tonight, I will be sitting down and I will be writing out how I want a man to treat me, how I want to be treated by my man, how I want to be thought about and cared for by my man. You need to develop a type in terms of how you are treated. That's what, in my humble opinion, women do not give enough attention to. And then you end up in these crazy situations with men who treat you crazy or do not prioritize you, don't treat you. Sometimes it's not even about abusing you. They just don't prioritize you. They don't see you as, you know, this person's important to me. I should be prioritizing this person. So that's number one on my list. When I, when I say that out loud, I feel in my spirit. I can feel in my body. Yes, that is what I want. That's how I want to be treated. I want to be treated like a priority by the man that I'm with. I want to be important to him. I want to matter in his life and in his world. That's the number one thing that's going on my list. And I'm going to think of some other things, but I want you to think about that too. How do you want to be treated? We do not give this enough attention. And in turn, we may attract a good looking man. We may attract a tall man. We may attract a wealthy man. We may attract, you know, a man who looks like you want him to look or has some of the qualities you want him to have. But you don't feel good about it. You're not treated the way you want to be treated. Like, why don't I feel good about this? I mean, I'll be honest with you. The last two or three men that I've dated, it's like, it looks good, you know, it's one of those things where we look good, right? It looks like it should feel good, but it doesn't. And and now, I'm as a grown-up woman, I'm ready for it to feel good. Like, I don't care what other people think. I don't care what it looks like on the outside. I don't care how mismatched we look or why is he with her, why is she with him. I'm over that. I simply want to coexist inside of a man's masculine containment. I want to feel safe. I want to feel prioritized. I want to feel seen. I want to feel heard. I want to feel desired. I want to feel like I matter to that man. I want to feel cherished like a little China doll, a little delicate, fragile China doll. That, yo, oh, oh, we got to be careful. We got to be careful not to drop this. We can't break this. This is important. This matters. That's how I want to be treated. Okay? And when that man sees my number come up on his phone, I want to, ooh, ooh, Anita's calling. Oh, I'm about to talk to my girl. You know, that's that's the feeling. That's 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 what I'm looking for. We don't talk about that enough. So, ladies, 
when you're, uh, I'm going I'm to make a separate video, and when you are thinking about your three lists, I've given this assignment a thousand times. It's called the Self-Discovery Relationship Tool. You are going to make three lists. The first list says, I want. Tell me what you want in an ideal relationship and in a partner, in a man. The second list says, I don't want. Tell me what you don't want in your relationship or, or from a man. The third list is, I need. Tell me what you need in the relationship and from that man. And remember, a want is like a preference. A need is a non-negotiable. Okay, a need speaks to your soul. A need helps you to show up in the relationship and be your absolute best. Okay, so self-discovery relationship tool, three lists. Oh, and then if I'm really, if I'm really feeling spicy, if I'm really feeling vicious, guess what I want you to do? I want you to boil down the three lists into three things. What are three things, three non-negotiables, because here's the thing that nobody is telling y'all. We have got to start simplifying. We have to start simplifying our standard. We have to start simplifying what it is that we really want and need. And nobody's talking about this. Like, we got these lists, right? I gave you the three lists. What I want, what I don't want, what I need. And, and some of these lists get long. Like, I have every client I work with do, the, do, do these lists. And I look at them, and I'm like, ooh, there's a whole lot. There's a whole lot, right? And then I ask you to boil it down. Distill it to three things. Three things that are non-negotiable. That person must have. Some, another coach actually gave this to me. Another coach actually told me to do this last year. And when I tell y'all, it took 40 days. It took 40 days for me to take my three lists and boil it down to three things. So she said, look, I'm the fairy godmother. I'm going to grant your wish today and give you, I'm going to give you what you want. But I need you to tell me the top three things that the man must have. That's it. Three. Top three things. Okay, I'm not saying you're not going to get other things, but he will definitely have these three things, right? And these are the non-negotiables. This is at its core, like this is what she said, at its core, these three things will make you happy. These three things will make you feel whole and complete and content in the relationship. Okay, so that's how she explained it to me. It took 40 days, y'all. 40 days. For me to, oh, okay, not that, okay, maybe this, no, not that, oh, maybe this, no. I went back and forth, back and forth. Finally, I got three things. And when I tell y'all, those three things have guided my dating. They have guided the men that I interact with. They have guided everything I do. Everything I do from that day forward was like, these three things. Does he have these three things? Simple, simple, and some of y'all need to do this. You need to, to simplify your standard. So at minimum, does he have these three things? I can send him along his way if he does not have all three of these things. It's so simple. It makes life so simple, it makes dating so simple. So yeah, I want y'all to do that. You can make your three lists, what I want, what I don't want, what I need. And then I want you to boil that list down to three things that your partner must have in the relationship. Okay. Now y'all want to hear my three? You ready? I've been pulled up to the house. You want to hear my three? Number one, he must love God in word and in deed. He must love Jesus and he must love God in word and in deed, meaning he'll profess it and he'll live it. That's number one. He must love God. He must claim Jesus. Okay. I love God. I love Jesus. I'll profess it with my mouth and I'll do it in my actions. I'm, I'll, I will be obedient to the way God says I should live. That's number one. That's the number one thing. If, if he ain't got that, if we disagree on that, I'm good. And I can't tell y'all how many men 
are like, oh, here we go. Here we go with wanting a Christian man. And it's not, no, he just, he must love God and word and deed. So, I, you know, that's it. I don't know any other way to say it. You profess it and you do it. So I can provide that. I love God in word and in deed. I'm living the life that God wants me to live. I'm living a righteous life for the most part. I'm, I'm sinful, you know, so it's not the, the walk isn't going to be perfect because I'm full of sin. But for the most part, I read the Bible and I do what it tells me to do. That's it. OK, you ain't got to be no super holy roller, you know, going to church seven days a week. All I ask is that you love God. You tell people that and then you do what he tell you to do. That's number one. Number two, he must be healthy and fit. That is something that I need. That is a non-negotiable. What I know about Anita is I am very passionate about my fitness. I'm very passionate about my health. I'm passionate about my skin, my teeth, going to the doctor. Y'all, you can't keep me away from the doctor. You can't keep me away from the dentist. Like, everything that God gave me in the physical realm, I want it to work the best it can work. If anything is out of order, I need to figure out why it's out of order. I need to figure out what I need to do to put it back in order. I am very passionate about health and fitness, and that man should be too. So that means that's going to just qualify men who are grossly overweight. That's going to disqualify men whose mouth is messed up. That's going to disqualify men who eat poorly. That's going to disqualify men who don't work out and on high blood pressure medicine and all that other stuff. No, that's going to disqualify you, baby. If you got diabetes and all this other, that's going to disqualify you. I take one, count it, one prescription medicine every day. I take supplements. I take ashwagandha. I take 5-HTP at night. I take my BHRT every day. Okay, but as far as chemical medicine, one. One pill that I take every day that's made by a pharmacist. Everything else is natural. Everything else is drinking tea, drinking water, eating healthy, walking around, walking in nature, running, taking a dog for a run, going to the dog park. Like, I move around. And I need a man that can do that, too. So that's number two. Last but not least, and people were surprised by this. People were actually, I like, my friends was like, what? That number three, Anita, you sure? <laughs> People were surprised by number three, but this is the truth. Number three is kindness and empathy. The man should be kind and he should be empathetic, meaning he puts himself in other people's shoes. And kind as in, I can be compassionate, but I ain't no punk, right? He ain't no pushover. He ain't no nice guy. He ain't, he ain't no spineless nice guy, ballsless nice guy, but he is kind. And sometimes, as y'all well know, if you listen to my channel for a little while, you know, I'm kind, but the truth hurts, you know, like that's, I, I do the kind thing. When I tell women, like, stop opening your legs to men who haven't earned it, who, to men who, uh-uh, I'm being kind, baby. <laughs> like, I'm being kind. I'm telling you the truth. It's going to sting because other people are telling you that those things don't matter. When I tell you to stop drinking alcohol and, and mix company and, and not being sober minded around men, you can feel how you feel about it. But it is a piece of truth. It's a piece of God's truth. OK, so however you feel about it, that's all right. Like I said, I got thick skin. I can take it. But that is truth. There, there is a blueprint. There is a way in which you are to conduct yourself. And we need to stop acting like I'm an individual. And that don't apply to me. And I'm an individual. And it, that, that advice can't apply to everybody. Yes, it do. Yes, it do. God's word applies to everybody. Now, if you're not Christian, if you don't love Jesus like that, and look, I just went to the store yesterday. I went to this sock store. They sell thousands upon thousands upon different socks. I found a pair that said, I love Jesus. I can't wait to wear them. I love Jesus socks. That's what I got. My I love Jesus socks. And then I also got my money, my money socks. <laughs> so I, I love Jesus. And yes, I'm going to get my coin, <laughs> but I can't wait to wear them socks. But if you don't, if you ain't feeling God like that, if you ain't feeling Jesus like that, if you're not obedient like that, 
Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the people who love God and love Christ, but don't want to live the way he tells you to live. Then you know what? You don't even need to leave a comment. You really don't. If you're not feeling God like that, if you don't want to live the way he's telling you to live, you don't need to comment. You can look at my video and scroll on off. You can go to somebody else's video, but I'm telling you the truth. God has instructed a woman and a man how they are to live. And all you have to do is follow the blueprint. That's it. Follow the blueprint. But you drinking and and using drugs and all that, and you doing, "Mm, mm, you having a foul mouth, mm, you know, you dressing a certain way, mm, like, mm -mm, mm -mm, sorry, you're not going to, you're not going to change my mind on that. Be a lady. Conduct yourself like a lady conducts herself. And you thinking, oh, none of that matters. Man, yeah, bad men. Bad men don't care about that. Bad men don't care if you drink and, and get drunk. Bad men don't care if you get high or you use drugs. Bad men don't care if you swear. Bad men don't care if you have dress. Yeah. Okay. You're like, yeah. But if you want a decent, upstanding, godly, righteous man, you want a good man, yeah, check yourself because he don't want that. That's the, that's what's hurting your little feelings. Good men don't want that. And you hurt, but I got nothing. Like I got nothing. I'm just telling you what God I'm, I, I'm telling you what God told me. <laughs> I'm telling you what God downloaded in me. There is a way, ladies, for you to conduct yourself. Period. And if you don't care about that, if you're not interested in, oh, I'm not interested in those type of men, and okay. Like I said, this message is not for you. You can click off of it and go on about your day. Okay? But we have got to simplify our standards. And um, we've got to start prioritizing different things. That's what's messing us up, if I'm being honest. We're prioritizing height. We're prioritizing income. We're prioritizing all these things that really, oh, y'all really ain't going to want to hear this. They really don't matter to your long-term happiness. They really don't matter when it comes to your marital satisfaction or your contentment with your life. That's what that's what these other toxic content creators are not going to tell you. They're going to make you believe that the more money a man makes and the more money a man gives to you, like somehow that's a magic elixir. It's not. I was married to a man who made a whole lot of money. I was married to a man who, you know, I didn't work. I got to stay at home. And he he paid for everything and paid for my lifestyle. And it was miserable. It was a nightmare. So I'm not saying all men who have money are like that. But what I am telling you is I just and, and here's the crazy part. When I met him, I did not prioritize money. So I was not looking for money. Right. And that that wasn't a, a thought in my head. I wanted a man who could provide. I wanted a man who had consistent income and could provide if ever I wanted to stay at home with my children, but I did not prioritize marrying a rich man. And and that's what I've been telling women all along. Like every man that I've ever dated has made a good income. He's made a good income. He's been a gentleman. He's been generous. He's taken me places and paid for things and bought me things. Every single man. I have not dated a broke man ever. So I'm not telling you to do that. What I am telling you to do is prioritize the right things. All that other stuff comes along with the man of high character. All that other stuff comes along with a man who treats you well. A man who treats you well and loves you and cares for you and wants you to be happy, all that stuff comes along. Like whatever money he makes is your money. And I've said this before. If I want to get a man's money, The first thing I'm going to go after is the man's heart. I'm actually going to go after his heart. That, in a sense, all but, you know, assures me that once I have his heart, whatever else I want, I have. So, you know, they're telling you to go after a man's money. And, okay, you'll get used. And, you know, he'll use you. You'll use him. And if you're okay with that relationship, have at it. Me personally, that's not the relationship I want. I do not want a transactional relationship. I do not want to be used and I don't want to use anyone else. I'm looking for a connection. I'm looking for a man who wants to get to know me beyond my my A and T, you know, who wants to truly get to know my heart, truly get to know my mind. 
And again, here's the advice to men. Stop leading with sex. This is I tell men this every single time. I've told my good, uh, my good male friend, like, don't lead with sex. You'll get all the sex you can handle. But men who lead with sex, men who pressure women for sex, like straight out the gate, straight out the door, like, it's, I, I personally love it because it's the, it's, a, it's the easiest way to disqualify a man. If a man leads with sex, disqualify him. It's easy. It's, it, it can't get any easier than that. But I always tell men, stop leading with sex. Try to get to know her mind. Try to touch her heart. Try to do, you know, kind things for her. Be empathetic. Be all the things. But sex, you know, and like I said, common sense will tell you men want sex, but that's not the thing you're leading with. So if you get all these other things, her body will follow. You get into her mind, you get into her heart, her body will follow. That's how it works. And I tell women the same thing. Get into his mind, get into his heart. And whatever it is he has that you think you want, okay, Okay, if he's generous, if he's loving, if he's like, yeah, I want to make you happy. I want to do these things to make you happy. That's it. That's it. It's not It's not rocket science. But this idea that we're going to use people, like I'm not, mm -mm, I'm never going to co-sign that because here's the thing. Karma is real. That karma is going to come back on you. You're going to see what becomes of that, this idea that, okay, I'm just... I'm money, 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 and he's got to send me money for my nails and send me money for my hair. And if he wants to take me out on a date, he has to pay for my outfit. What kind of fracanacle bull is that? Like, who raised you? Who raised you? I mean, like, make it make sense. Y'all want to be feminist so bad. You want to be equal to men so bad. But then the other side of the coin is I want to juice every man. <laughs> it just it doesn't make sense. It's like the it's like the man who wants a yeah, so let's let's bring this moment full circle. It's like the man who wants a virtuous woman but is out here sleeping around. It's like the man who wants a virtuous woman but has an OnlyFans account. It's like the man who wants a virtuous woman but is watching porn. That's what y'all sound like. You want a good man, you want a provider, you want to stay at home, but on the flip side, you want to juice him. You want to use him. You want him, to, you know, the man don't even know you, and he got to send you money to go out on a date. What kind of craziness is that? It doesn't make sense. So now y'all got the spirit of confusion. A lot of women are in the spirit of confusion because you're not going to get a good man doing that. You're not going to get a godly man doing that. You're not. You're going to get a man who may have some money, but he also, you know, has some poor character to go along with it. You're going to get a man that's going to use you. You're going to get a man that's going to dangle his little money over your head. And because women ain't built like that, can I keep it a hundred? Y'all ain't built like that. You're not built to play in that, in, in that man's field. They, their football field, like the man's football field and the woman's field, that's totally different. Y'all not built for that. That's why a lot of y'all get burnt. That's why a lot of y'all get in these bad situations and you get in these P. Diddy situations because you not built like that. So stop all that foolishness. Work on yourself. Create a life that you enjoy and fill it with people and things and all the uh, hobbies, interests, all the things that make you feel good, that make you feel happy, smile, actually get a, a oxytocin bonding from your friends and your family and your pets and your children, and, and learn to love the life you have, and be open to good men, prioritize the right things. How do I want to feel? How do I want to be treated by this man? That's the, and then simplify your standards. Boil it down to three things. Your fairy godmother comes along. I need three, three things that the man will definitely have that I deliver to you. Well, what about, what about, what? No, you're going you gonna to get other things. Now, I can't tell you what all that will be, but I can assure he'll have these three qualities. I can't tell you all the other things that you're going to get or not get. Like, you just give me the three must-haves, and I will drop that man off at your front door, and voila, 
okay? But you got to come up with the three things. And most of y'all can't do it. But I got my three things. He must know and love God. He must profess Jesus. He must be healthy and fit. Look, I got the, the thumbs up because I did this, okay? He must love Jesus, right? He must know and love God in word and deed. He got to be healthy and fit. He has to be kind and empathetic. So those are the three things. When the man show up and knock on my door, I can be assured that he has those three things. And everything else, I'm going to work it out. I'm going to work it out. That's the foundation right there, right? Is 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 trusting him, loving him. He going to have some quirks. He going to have some flaws. He going to get on my nerves. But he know and love God. He's healthy and fit. <laughs> He's kind and empathetic. Like, I'm going to keep going back to that. He going to get on my last nerve. And I'm saying, you know and love God in word and deed. You healthy, you fit, and you kind and empathetic. That, that's what I'm going to say, like a mantra over and over. Okay? But y'all need to do that. You need to simplify your standards. Some of your standards, and look, some of the standards y'all have, you can't meet. You can't meet. Mm-hmm. Because I can meet those three standards, right? That's why I put them on the list. I made sure that those three things are me. So, yes, that's how I know I'm in my wheelhouse, is I'm not requiring something of a man that I can't provide. But this whole foolishness about y'all needing somebody to cash out you money to go on a date and all that, y'all, mm, that's, that's some childish mess. That's some immature mess right there. But I can assure you, the man that sends you that money, that ain't no godly man. That man's character is such that, okay, you owe me. You owe me. And when we get on this date, when we get alone, when, when I get you to my house or I come to your house, you owe me. That's what you're setting yourself up for. And here's the thing I want to make clear, because I had to make this clear to my own daughter. That does not mean we don't allow men. I allow men to do a whole lot for me. I allowed a man, look, I allowed a man to buy me a house. I allowed a man to buy me several cars. I allowed a man to pay my bills. I've allowed men to come over and cut the grass and blow the leaves. I've allowed men to buy me things and take me places. I allow men to do a lot of things for me. And guess what? I don't feel like I owe them anything. I owe them my appreciation. I owe them my thanks. I owe them my smile and my essence. And oh, mm, this has made me so happy. That's it. That's what they get. <laughs> That's what they get. But here's the difference. I don't tell a man anything. Again, I'm trying to teach y'all. I don't tell a man anything. I don't tell a man to do this and tell a man to do that. And I need this and I want that. And I better have this and you better. I don't do any of that. What I do as a feminine woman is I show up. I'm sweet. I'm sexy. I'm sensual. I'm kind. I smile. I look him in his eyes. Mm. Mm. And guess what? I enchant him. And in, in the process of that enchanting, he decides what he want to do. Like, he he decides what he want to do. That's the truth. And see, that's what that's the skill that y'all lack. That's why you feel like you got a strong arm a man and you got to come out your mouth and tell him to send you this and cash app you that and do this. And No, you enchant a man. You use your femininity to enchant a man. You're sweet and you're submissive and you're, see, that's it. I get men to do a lot of things for me just being quiet. Just not having something to say all the time. And they're like, man, Anita's easy. Like, mm. like she's just easy to be with. It's just great. It's great over here. And you know what? Let me, let me try to do something to make her feel good. Let me try to do something to make her smile. Let me, you know, let me send her some flowers. Let me, yeah, I've had all of that. I don't tell men to do that stuff. Mm -mm. I don't tell men to do that stuff. They just do that because I enchant. And I listen. And I, mm -hmm, yeah. Oh, my God, that's so fascinating. Like, that's it. 
that's it. So if you got to say with words and you have to strong arm and ultimatum and all, that's, I certainly don't do that. I certainly don't do that. Mm-mm. The ultimatum is nowhere in my wheelhouse. Because remember, I walk clean away. I leave you alone. I leave you where you stand. And I don't want to make a man do anything for me. If it don't come from the depths of his soul and his heart, I don't want it. Mm-mm. I don't want it. So no, ma'am, you should not be. You got to do this and you got to pay for the babysitter. And just, <laughs> I'll be looking at this stuff like what? What? Y'all go about it all wrong. And wonder why you get stuck with these men that when we going to do something, when we going, when you coming over, when you going to do something, blah, blah, blah. That's why. You set the tone. You set the transactional tone. You let it you let it be known that you can be bought. You let it known that there's a price on your your, your girl parts. And wonder why. <laughs> no. There's no price on Anita. And if there was, the closest thing to it is marriage. That's what it's gonna cost. It's gonna cost you walking me down that aisle in a white dress and putting a ring on my finger and giving me your last name. So if it could if it could cost anything, that's what it would cost. But this idea of no, y'all y'all going about it all wrong and that's why you getting caught up in the foolishness. You getting caught up with these men that are transactional. They're not they don't have a servant's heart. They don't want to do things just for the love and the care and the I want to see you smile. I want to see you happy. And guess what happens? Because you're happy and you smile and you appreciate, you do things for them. It's in a woman's nature to do things for a good man. And if men could just be a servant, have a servant's heart, oh my God, a woman would give them everything. Everything. You do not have to play this tit for tat game. But... Y'all are not attracting those men. You're attracting the transactional men that, you know, I'll buy this if you'll do this, or I'll go take you here if you'll do that. You know, no, I'm not interested in that guy. I'm interested in the man who's interested in my soul and my spirit and my heart and everything else. And he's like, wow, I just, I mean, I did look and look, y'all, I'm going to tell y'all this. I'm going to tell y'all this. I thought about this today. I kid you not, I was in Target today, and I was walking around. I said, you know what? This is going to be my next date. <laughs> I said, the next date, the next date that I have is going to be going to Target or going to Home Depot. That's the other thing I did. I went to Home Depot, and I got 20 bags of mulch in the back of the car that I'm about to get my son to, to um, take out. That's going to be my next date, y'all. Yeah, you know what? Let's meet up here. And I'm going to give the address. Yeah, let's meet up here. And he's going to meet me outside of Target and be like, um, <laughs> what, what, what is this? I got to restock some things. I got to restock some things. And so, you know, I thought we'd meet here at Target and you can, you know, shop along with me and we can talk and yeah. And I can restock some things I needed the house or we can go to Home Depot and I can look around at some stuff there and get some ideas, you know, some little projects. I got a lot of little projects. And look, I just came from Hobby Lobby and I bought all this outdoor stuff because I'm having an outdoor game night in June. But all this beautiful stuff, beautiful stuff for the outside. That's what I want to do on the next date. Okay. I'm not going to pretend to be somebody I'm not, and I don't want you to do that. I actually want to see what else you got other than your fancy date, your fancy money, and your trips, and going here, and doing this, and doing that. No, bruh. Walk me around Home Depot. Walk me around Target. Now, this is the thing y'all don't get. So, something like that, we just, okay. And let's say I pick up a few things at Target and we get to the checkout and he and this this is what y'all don't want to hear. But this is what nine times out of ten happens. 
he pulls out his card and he passes it. Oh, thank you. So and look, I never say you don't have to do that. I say, oh, thank you so much. This certainly was not my intention. I just wanted to, you know, walk around. I needed to restock some things. No, babe, I got it. See, I didn't ask. We walked around. <laughs> I restocked some toilet paper and some other things I needed. I bought some creamer. I bought some whatever. And he's like, nope, I got it. See, that's, that's, that's what y'all not hip to. That's what y'all don't understand. You don't understand that. You think you got to juice a man when all you need to do is, I remember the second date, I don't think it was the first date, but the last guy I dated long term, the second date we went on was to Target on Black Friday. We went to Target on Black, it was, no, it was actually on Thanksgiving. It was on Thanksgiving night. We had dinner together Thanksgiving night at the Cracker Barrel. And when Target opened later that night, he and I went. Because there was some things that, you know, was on the, the Black Friday sale that I wanted to get. And we went. That was the second date we went on. So y'all better start getting hip. Okay? I don't know where you learning from. I don't know who teaching you. But you need to, you know, if you want something real, right? If you want something real, if you want something long term, this is how to get it. Okay? You take a man to Target, you get the things you would normally buy, and you have no expectation. Usually if I'm going to places like that, I have zero expectation. I don't expect him to pay. I don't expect that, you know. If he does, great. That's a beautiful thing. I go, oh, thank you so much. I appreciate this so much. How sweet of you. That's it. I don't make men do anything. They do what they want to do, and I thank them gloriously for it. I do not feel beholden to them. I certainly don't feel like I owe them my body. So I don't know where you're getting your information from, ladies. Okay, be the girl. Be the feminine girl. That's your power. Not being a boss, babe. Not being a boss, be. Be the girl. Be soft. Be sweet. Be feminine. Be vulnerable. Be open. Be transparent. Right? You are, the first thing you're going to assess about a man is, is he safe? That's where a lot of women are going wrong. Y'all are too worried about what he got, if he's sexy, if he's tall, you know, what his hands look like or his lips, look, all his other stuff. Is he safe? I'm walking around Target with you, and the whole time I'm like, is this man safe? <laughs> is this man safe? That's what I'm thinking. We sitting across from each other at dinner. Is this man safe? That's what I'm thinking. Is this man safe? Because once I've determined, okay, I'm attracted enough to go on a date with you. Like, I can push that to the side and then think about the things that matter. Is this man safe? Can I trust him? How do I feel around him? That's where your, your train is going off the track. Y'all don't care nothing about that until you deepen the relationship and he's slapping you or cussing you out or cheating on you or lying to you. Now, all of a sudden, he's not safe. He's not safe for me. You should have assessed that in the first 30 days. Is this man safe? Tell him no. Tell him no in some way, shape, or form. You're going to find out real quick, fast if he's safe. If he flip out, if he go off, he's not safe. If I can't tell you no, and you flip out or go off or cuss me out or I don't hear from you for days and weeks at a time, you're not safe. You are not a safe person. You are not emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually, financially safe. If he asks you for money, he's not safe. Like, I can't make this up. But instead of letting him get in your drawers, you need to determine if he's safe. Some of y'all are sleeping with the enemy. You sleeping with the devil's son. But because he's sexy, because he's tall. So, mm -mm. nope. All right, I'm going in. Y'all, I have my Mountain Dew. That means I got two hours of energy in me. 
And when I tell y'all, I'm about to go up here. I got two hours of energy. This little Mountain Dew right here, this will buy me two to three hours of superb focus, superb energy. So I'm going to use that to get some paperwork done. And I just want to thank everybody for reaching out and getting your 50 questions to ask before you have sex. I've gotten a lot of response, a lot of response. So remember, you can always email me at info at betterlovemovement.com. But I've gotten a lot of great response. And uh, next month, I got to tell you all this. So next month, we will have group coaching. Group coaching will be back. For those of you who have been watching my pl platform for a long time, you're already very familiar with group, group coaching. I'm going to talk in another video about group coaching and how it works and how we do it. Um, but group coaching is back for the month of June. And I am going to figure out what this uh, next month's theme is going to be or topic is going to be. And if you'd like a little taste of what group coaching is like, you can go into my pillar link. So it's pillar.io slash better love movement. And you can purchase the last two group group coaching sessions. So one of them was feminine communication. The other one was dark feminine versus light feminine. You can actually purchase it. You can actually go in, purchase it, and I will send you the link to the private video. One of them, I think it's feminine communication, it has a free workbook. There is a free workbook that whether you purchase the group coaching or not, you can download that workbook for free. You just go to pillar.io slash better love movement. Okay, so you got lots of resources. You got lots of free stuff on my pillar link. Uh, a couple of ebooks are over there. One of the ebooks, there's two ebooks over there that are free. And you can go on over there, check it out. My The pillar link is also down in the description. All right, so go there, see all of the offerings that I have. You can sign up for coaching. And when group coaching comes back, there will be a link there for group coaching. Okay, it is the most affordable way to work with me live and in person over Zoom. And uh, when I tell you it is super affordable, the class always gets full. It's always a full class because it's super affordable. Like anybody can afford it, okay? Thank you so much for uh, hanging out with me. I appreciate you all. And thank you so much for all of your kind comments, all of your kind words. I appreciate you rocking it out here with me. Uh, I hope we're building a community here. I hope we're building a community of women, younger women, middle-aged women, older women, and we're here to like love on each other and support each other. Please comment below. Please let us know who you are, where you're from, um, what you'd like to learn. Like, please, let's, let's build a supportive, loving community here because we really need it. And there are lots of women in the world. They really need it. They need other female friends. They need other female supports or other, you know, they, they need it. They need to feel uplifted and inspired by other women. So please share in the comments. I appreciate it. I read every single one of your comments. And I so appreciate you all. Uh, but we got lots of exciting things coming. I'm super excited for summer. And uh, I'll actually be in Houston next weekend. Uh, I go to Houston June 1st, so um, my understanding is there's been a really bad storm there, so I hope it's not too horrible. But if you're from Houston, you know, feel free to comment, reach out, let me know how you're doing, let me know how things are going, because I'll be there next weekend. And thank you so much. I appreciate you all. Have a great day, and as always, stay open to love.